Welcome back to Asgard, and welcome to another episode of our Sky Factory 2.5 modded Minecraft Let's Play series. So, today, if you recall, I said we're going to work on setting up our first RF tools dimension. So, we're going to jump right into that. There's a lot to it. Um, honestly, I haven't gotten a whole lot done since last episode. I've been putting in a lot of hours getting um, our Skyrim Let's Play series um, up and ready to go. And I've actually got that just about done. Um, I started actually recording earlier, um, but there's a mod I need to kind of take out of that. I did a b bunch of stress testing, but um, just a little bit of tweaking left um, for that. So for our RF Tools Dimension, there's going to be a couple things that we want to get first. Um, the first of which is going to be a Tesseract. We've already got one made. And then we're also going to want to get ourselves a chunk loader, which well, we've already got one. So we're good to go on that end. Um, then, let's see, RF tools. Um, one thing I do suggest we get, do I already have the, I thought I had, I think I've got it over there. <clears throat> um, but we will want to get ourselves a dimension monitor item. So let's see. Network monitor. Let me just search it. Network monitor. Dimension monitor. Uh, right here, just a comparator and a couple dimlets and some redstone. So, probably should have searched it on here. Let's go ahead and grab that. And then that. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to um, let us check um, when we're inside of a dimension, um, the current situation with the dimension that we're in. So definitely something that I suggest just having um, on hand, especially when you first set up a dimension. And... There we go. Um, we're also going to need this RF Tools Dimension Manual. You can do it without this. This just kind of helps you, um, like when you go in here to do your dimension editing and um, and whatnot. So this one, this is just crafted with a book and some redstone like that. And so that's pretty much all the side stuff that um, I really suggest grabbing. We're also going to need some conduits, but we'll get those in just a second. So we're going to need this Dimlet Researcher, which I've already crafted. Because um, if you recall, I was going to set up a RF Tools to mention a while back, but it didn't work out due to the need for Awakened Draconium. And then we, you're also going to need this Dimension Inscriber that we've already got, um, which we'll get to that in a minute. Um then we're also going to want to get ourselves a dimension builder um, which is the thing that takes the awakened draconium and this machine frames we've already got a bit of those so let's run back over here and let's get our machines crafted that we're going to need for this um, it's honestly not too too bad now I will say this pack does have um, some modified um, recipes like with that awakened draconium but um, still not too too bad so no not creative one dimension here we go we'll grab one of these and then we're also going to want to get ourselves um, it's not doing the T's which is messing everything up um, we're gonna want a couple of these matter transmitters um, Go ahead and make two of these. They're not all that expensive, especially by the time that you can make an RF Tools dimension uh, with the RF Tools builder and everything. It's really not an expensive recipe. And then we're going to need one matter receiver. So grab that. And then we're also going to want to get ourselves a dialing device. None of which is all that expensive except for the uh, builder. And then the last thing that we're going to want 
is one of these empty dimension tabs. And that's pretty much everything we need to get this up and going. It's just a matter of getting it all set up, um, which is kind of a bit involved, especially once we start putting in the dimlets for the um, setting up the um, dimensions. So we'll put our dimension builder right here and let it start building up power. Um, and then let's get some conduits. And for right now, which this, honestly, this is going to change. I can already promise you that. Um, but let's just set up. Um, we'll set up our dialing device right here. And it's like really like wanting to chug today. I don't know why that is. I have no clue because it, it wasn't doing this earlier so I don't know um, and we'll set up our matter receiver actually we'll set that up right over here which like I said eventually we're going to just have like a teleporting room oh, these are the wrong conduits aren't they We'll just run that over. We'll put our matter receiver in right there. And then let's go ahead and set up our two transmitters. Um, let's see. Set it up like this, I think. Oh my gosh. It's like really wanting to fight me today. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our dialing device. Um, let's see, set up this matter transmitter, and we'll call this. Um, home base for right now. Public is fine. And yeah, we'll leave it like that. And so now if we look in the dialing device, that one's called home base. And then we're going to set this one up and we're going to call it um, dimension one for right now. We'll change it once we have more information on the dimension that it's going to be going to. And yeah, and basically we're just letting this one fill up with power. Um, we'll end up changing that in a minute. Okay, so now that we've got all of that set up, let's go ahead and actually build our dimension. So to do it, first we're going to want to inscribe it. So we're going to put our empty dimension. God, we got so many achievements all of a sudden. Find your first unknown dimlet, research an unknown dimlet, and build a new dimension. Okay. Um, gosh. Okay, this lag is driving me insane. I'm going to restart the game, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, welcome back. Um, I actually started it back up, and I went through the, you know, the motions of recording it, and then realized I hadn't hit the record button, I guess, at the end of it, too. Um... So we did get a couple matter transmitter, transmitters set up. Um, we're going to quickly go over how you set up your RF dimensions. Now one thing I did notice is that no matter what we do, we seem to get a void world every time. So um, I read that there's a, a config that you can change um, in the RF tools config. Um, to change that so that you can actually get like other dimensions but I did I looked and looked and I couldn't find the actual config file like where you change the uh, the values so I don't know 
uh, apparently it's in there like a person posted saying that there was a config but he didn't post what the config was and I couldn't find it I went through it's a huge list of stuff and couldn't find anything on it but um, let's say for example we'll go ahead and start with just a plain empty dimlet um, or dimension we can just set it in here in the inscriber and say store and it's going to um, you know make just this blank dimlet now since I've already made a blank dimlet um, before one of these is blank um, what we'll need to do is let's grab a digit and we'll just take the digit 4 and we'll put that into there and store it and the way these digits work why did it shouldn't have been one that we'd already made I don't think let's grab say the digit 7 perhaps okay we'll put this into there and say store it huh how curious well, anyway the digit should change it because the way it works if I made a dimension with say X Y and Z dimlets and then I made another one with the exact same X Y Z dimlets um, it would be the exact same world and we would go to it you know regardless of which one we use it would take us to the same world but um, yeah see that's already generated ID 3 hmm no clue why that is. Put that into there and extract it. Okay. I don't know. I have no clue why that is. Um, but you can use those those digits to um, change kind of where you end up. Um, yeah, that's an ID four, but we did what like digit seven or something. So I don't know why it came out that way. Um, but for example, if we wanted to make our own custom dimlet, um, let's say we want the material, we'll take a forest dimlet, and we're going to take an obsidian material, maybe. Uh, well, let's just do light gray. Uh, stained clay and we'll say we're gonna have mushrooms in there because I actually don't know a way off the top of my head to get mushrooms um, normally like in this pack I'm sure there's a way to do it I just haven't actually looked but we'll do that we'll do a dark blue sky um, and what else? We want any effects, like any debuffs. Uh, we'll say the time is midnight. I mean, there's all different kinds of uh, stuff in here that we can use. Um, we're going to say we're in Forest Hills Dimlet. And it's going to have ravines in it. Okay. And we can grab one of these Patreons. They don't really cost that much more. And it kind of gives like a little just um, vanity type effect to the world. Um, if it actually makes a world for us. But we'll see. Um, oh, we got glowstone there. And... Yeah, I think that's good. And we'll go into our, our, our inscriber, put this in there, and then put all of our dimlets in there. Too many biomes specified for forest. Okay, so I guess we can't use that. Ravines does not use material modifiers. Ravines is possibly useless as it does not work on all terrains. Okay, so we'll pull that out. And now we've got dangling modifiers. because we've got those we'll do tendrils 
what we'll do. Tendrils should work. Yeah. Because um, you kind of, whenever you set a material here, like light gray, sta light gray stained clay, you have to put a feature with it. So in this case, we're going to use tendrils. And we'll go ahead and say store that. There we go. We got our dimlet. We'll put it into this dimension builder. And it's going to take it just a minute to craft it. Um, it's not actually going to take that long. Now, if we start making more elaborate worlds with it, um, it will take quite a while longer. But um, perhaps this one won't. And it's possible that, you know, when I made the dimlet before, it's possible that because I used just a standard um, dimlet, it's possible that that's why we got a void world with it. But now that we've got that set up, let's come over here to our dialing device. And I've got two matter transmitters set up here. I've got home base and then I've got home two. Um, we'll just go ahead and connect it to home two. And we'll select this right here. And you know what? I forgot to name this. Can I bring this over and name it really, really quick? We'll call this um, forest. And then when we put it back into the Dimension Builder, see it's building up power right now um, to power the world. And we'll connect Home 2. We'll go into our dialing device, select Home 2, and connect it to Forest. And say Dial. And that means that's going to connect to the Forest world. And make sure you have a matter transmitter um, on hand. And let's just set it right there for right now and we're going to call this one uh, forest and we're going to connect forest to our overworld and dial it so that's this matter receiver that's connecting to this is our overworld our home base matter receiver and now once that's filled up with power, we'll just shift right click to pull it off and that'll save what it's um, dialed to. And then should be this one. We'll go ahead and just step on here. It takes just a second and we'll teleport into our new world. Let's see, did we actually, oh, we actually got some generation here. It's taking a second for it all to spawn in. All right, and now that we're here, let's go ahead and set down our matter transmitter, and okay, this is going to take a second. Oh, actually we'll just do it like that. We'll put our matter transmitter here and then we'll put our tesseract, or first we'll put our energy conduit there. We'll put our tesseract down here which I've already configured um, when I was in the last world. So these will receive power and they'll stay charged. And then we can kind of just check out this place. Oh look, we have a nether fort here. It's actually kind of nice. So this one did actually generate some stuff which is kind of cool. Um, I was kind of concerned before. Oh look, diamonds. I don't even know why I'm picking those up. And when you're in this world, that dimension monitor that I told you to make, see if we right click it, we'll see that we have, um, you know, power in this and everything. Oh, what is this building over here? Huh. Oops, whoops, whoops. whoops. What is this? I'm assuming this is one of the, the dimlet buildings. Oh yeah, it is. Dimensional blank blocks. And so if we come in here, we've got a sky body small sun dimlet. We've got a whole bunch of dimlets. And then we've also got these here. And we got mob skeleton. Sky Inferno and Biome Tiger Heels. 
So, that's going to be like a really nice way for us to get additional dimlets, especially in these almost void-like worlds, because um, it's pretty easy just to fly between these and, um, you know, pick up all the new dimlets and stuff. So let's see what this one's got here. And with this, we can make better worlds and stuff as we progress. Or we can just lose dimlets through the roof. We got flower forest and sky gold color. And then we got special seed, jungle edge, and some unknown dimlets. And... Man, I've noticed these void worlds just are just slow. <laughs> like loading and stuff. I was wanting to make just a flat world, but uh, that didn't work out for us. So that's fine. I think now that I've seen this, I think it might be possible. Maybe. Um, but I'll have to test it and, you know, see. I mean, we're getting dungeons generated, but we're not actually getting, like, just a flat terrain. Because I told it to make forest but it's just making void. So um, if you guys do happen to know the config file to change to allow us to actually make worlds, feel free to let me know. Because I would think with RF tools, we should be able to make like an actual world. You know, if we've built up to this point, we've got Awakened Draconium. <laughs> Plus in my experience, actual worlds run better than Skyblock worlds. Once you get very much going in them. Like this is running terrible. <clears throat> With all these tendrils and stuff. But we'll head on back. Just right here. And there we go. And I mean you can chunk load those. The main thing though is chunk loading, you know, your power going into your dimension builder because this is where the power is being stored for the planet or the you know the world that you created and let's go ahead and scan our dimlets here see what we get I'm gonna throw these into here for now let's see we got uh, uh, Time, Midnight, Sky Black Color, Witchery Brew, Savannah, Ice Plain Spikes, Green Stained Clay, Mesa Plateau F, We've got an Iron Ore, Hard Rain, Taiga Liquid Glue, Blazes. You know, there's all different kinds. Um, another thing that I want to just briefly cover here that we kind of need. Um, actually, I should probably go over here, huh? to where we'll actually craft it. Um, one thing that I want to set up for our system and kind of automate is all the dimlets that we get from like our mob farm and stuff. What is that even? Oh, that was where I ended up going when I was doing the video before I actually went and didn't bring a uh, a linked up transmitter. Like you want to make sure and link those up before you go. Otherwise you're not going to be able to link it up because you don't have a dialing device in range. And I went over there without it linked and had to suicide and come back through and make a new one um, to get back. So just be aware of that. Um, <clears throat> but let's see, our RF tools. I want to make a, let's see here, find it. Um... having a mind blank and I can't think of the name of it so I'm just going to find it here. Um, here it is. The modular storage. Let's go ahead and make one of these. Let's get a chest. Okay. There's that. Okay, and then let's go ahead and grab a 
Let me see. I find it here. Is it down here? Yeah. Okay, we're going to grab a storage module tier 3, and we're going to have to work it up um, to that point. So let's go ahead and grab a chest. Okay. Look at that. Oh, damn chests, I swear. two and we need blocks of gold and blocks of iron and if you're not familiar with this block it's really really nice um, for like early game storage and stuff but we're going to use it for something a little bit different here um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a, uh, let me find it here, right here, this Dimlet storage module, and we'll get that. And then what my goal is, is we're actually, I'm actually going to end up moving that Dimlet uh, researcher over to our AE system and have it set up so all of our Dimlets just go through there um, by default. And um, I know there's some recipes that take them, but just for ease of operation, we're going to set it up to move those into the Dimlet Researcher automatically. And where's my, there it is, okay. Because I need my dolly. There it is, okay. So we'll just move this over to here, and we'll set up our modular storage. I do apologize about the terrible, like, chunkiness of this uh, today. Why will this connect? Okay. Oh, probably because there's no storage module. Never mind. Now I'll put that in there. Okay, and it connects. Good. And we're going to add this Dimlet storage module to it. So that way it kind of gives it some special Dimlet properties um, that we can use. Oh, God. There we go. It's driving me insane today. Like I know it, sometimes it gets bad on here, but never this bad. It may also be because we've been working in this area today. Okay, so let's get just an, a few item conduits, really just one. And we'll set this up to extract. And there we go. So we'll get all of our Dimlet sorted. And there we go. And we can set it up with icons here and stuff. Um, I usually run it like this. But, uh, and we'll just keep our dimlet stored in there. And what I'm thinking is we will um, hook this into our AE system so that any dimlets that we get will just automatically get researched and then dumped into here for us. And so we'll have all of our dimlets in just one, you know, general place for storage. So... There we go. And now we've got all of our dimlets in here. And let's see. I'm going to say it was in here. Charge porter. Okay, maybe it's not in here. 
But anyway, um, yeah, so we're going to hook this into our plot energistic system along with this and just have all the dimlets ran through that. Um, what I might do is have it set up so that it keeps... Um, yeah, I might do that really, really quick. We'll set um, this interface up. Because like I said, some of this stuff does take just the blank dimlets for crafting. So what we'll do is we'll tell our system to, you know, say keep... 10 of these on hand at a time. And that way anything after 10 will get sorted and then we'll always have a few on hand for crafting. Um, and then whenever we use those up, you know, any any future ones it gets will go to that interface first. Because um, we can always set the priority up. Um, let's see. Set the priority up to like a thousand so that it, it's going to keep you know, this stuff in here first. All right. And really, I guess it's just the interface that needs that priority increase. All right. And I think we're going to end the episode out there. Um, by the way, if you want to ever dismember your dimlets you can um, if you recall I was putting them into there and um, oops, doing extract and you don't really get the dimlets back so be aware of that um, but uh, you can free up your um, your dimension tab and get that back so um, but yeah, so I'm going to end the episode out there. If you enjoyed it, as always, please comment, like, subscribe. It's very, very much appreciated. And if you do have any questions about the RF tools, dimension stuff, let me know. Um, you know, in a standard world, it works identical to witchery, if you're familiar with, I mean, not witchery, with uh, Mistcraft, if you're familiar with that. So you can generate whole new worlds with, you know, special properties. We'll eventually, hopefully, make a draconium uh, mining world. It is rather expensive on power um, to do that. If we pull it up here, um, it is 200,000 RF per tick create cost and 100,000 to maintain it. So very, very, very expensive. But, um, you know, imagine all those tendrils being nothing but draconium. <laughs> so you know, it would be kind of worth it not to run constantly, but running for a brief time with, say, a quarry in there, and we would have more draconium than we could probably ever use in a short period of time. Um, like, as it stands right now, you really don't have a lot of it. 41. So, you know, the, the end stone just isn't a reliable method for draconium. But, uh, you know, we could also just go to the end and mine it up which would probably be just as effective. <clears throat> so it's really just up to you. I'm just kind of, I figure we'll make one just for fun because it's a really, really expensive dimlet. Um, but anyway, we don't have it yet, and until we do, we can't set that up. So, <coughs> um, <clears throat> But yeah, I just wanted to cover that this episode because it's, <clears throat> it's actually kind of, I feel like it's an overlooked mod. I've known people to... Uh, You know, be, even me, for example, um, when I wasn't familiar with RF Tools, I was really, really big on Mistcraft, loved that mod, and just loved the, you know, the ability to just create new worlds at will. And I overlooked RF Tools for the longest time because I didn't realize you could do the same thing with RF Tools. And um, honestly, I like the way that RF Tools is set up more because you have, like, you know, where you just have to just pump in a ton of power to run some of these and stuff and to keep them up. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to end the episode out there. If you, yeah, I've already went through all that. I've, I've been running on very little sleep, like no sleep as of last night. So I do apologize if I rambled any, um, but anyway, until next episode, do take care and I hope to see you then.